to another episode of On Finding Peace. And I am joined today with uh, my guest, I'm very pleased to have her, uh, Jan Bowen. And we're going to be talking uh, about how do we make some life transitions, especially as we transition in life from, uh, you know, working hard and kind of our daily life into retirement. And then what does that mean and how best can we cope with that? So welcome, Jan. It's great to have you. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks very much. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, can you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm a life coach and executive coach. So I've worked with a lot of working people that are in a state of transition. And I'm also an author. And I've lived my own life, um, particularly, well, I actually started quite young, just intuitively living mindfully. So I speak of it from a very um, practical standpoint, mm -hmm. as well as a theoretical one. Okay, great. What is your definition or how you live out mindfulness? Because I, I know a lot of people have different viewpoints on it, and that's the focus of uh, this show and my writings, and I'm always mentioning that word. Um, but how do you define it or approach it or, or look at it? I think you and I share the same definition. Um, <laughs> And I was listening to one of your shows and I was smiling to myself because you put it so succinctly and I'm not positive I can repeat it so succinctly, but it's really simple. Um, it's just living each moment in that moment. You know, it's mm -hmm. living in the present and there's another component to it. Um, and that's with no judgment. It's yes. just allowing that one moment. Yeah, and, and I, I appreciate you throwing that piece in there because for me, that is, uh, you know, really the key to all of this is the uh, living without uh, judging what's happening, you know, just kind of letting it be. And, you know, wh where life is is where life is and what we're feeling is what we're feeling and, you know, kind of just living that moment, you know, and the minute we judge it, we've changed it and, and you know, we put something else on and we missed whatever it was. So exactly. Yeah. The concept is quite simple. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, but most definitely. But it really becomes uh, extremely difficult to live. And, uh, you know, that's something that I struggled with and, and will still do. But, you know, definitely a lot more, uh, you know, prior to finding mindfulness that, you know, it, it's somewhat difficult to start and to work on. But, uh, in and of itself, the concept is, is very simple. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. So you are talking about finding, you know, kind of the mindfulness in your life. Uh, you know, how did that whole process kind of unfold for you? Um, again, similar to you, the words weren't always given for mindfulness. And I, I chuckled because you and I didn't always know each other. So when you invited me on the podcast, I was listening to your shows, not knowing a lot of the background ahead of time. And then I just was so tickled that our viewpoints really did mesh up um, mm. lockstep because I was practicing mindfulness as a um, young girl in high school before I had the terminology for it. Mm -hmm. um, instinctively, I was veering towards looking for some sort of calm. And I would read different things that led me to it without it was mindfulness. I was uh, teaching myself meditation in a way that I wasn't aware was meditation. Um, later, I took on some formal um, lesson and training and that sort of thing. But I really started young, just mm -hmm. listening and paying attention. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of uh, people, and, and I know uh, some practitioners, and I've been a counselor for a number of years, and you know, it seems that a lot of us were using mindful concepts within our clinical approaches, but weren't calling it that. And now that mindfulness is becoming much more mainstream, the, the more that I read about it and hear what other people have to say about it, the more I'm realizing, as with yourself, that 
you know, that this is stuff I, I've been doing for years, just didn't call it that and didn't realize that that's what it is. So it's, you know, kind of reassuring to me because that, you know, does, uh, I think, indicate the, uh, the universal ness i guess uh, of those concepts you know that they uh the, they're they go across the the barriers you know and and almost anybody you know can practice this right and i think there's that universality of uh wisdom that crosses <clears throat> all boundaries and time and when something gains a collective momentum um, it is really very reassuring, and it means that our group consciousness has been able to really understand much more, perhaps, of the need, um, mm -hmm. but also of how to embrace the um, actions behind it, not just talk about it, but also understand how to incorporate it in a really practical way to um, make their lives easier. Yeah. And that's really helpful. Yeah. Because it's great to talk about. I mean, and, you know, I laugh at myself and the people I talk with and my friends and stuff. I can talk about this stuff all the time and people can tune out or chuckle or whatever. It isn't until we actually find some benefit in doing things that it makes a difference. Yeah. And, and I totally agree. And, and that's a, a concept that I've tried to promote is what are the practical ways that we can live our lives in a more peaceful way? Yeah. And you know, the, the theory is great. You know, I mean, I, I teach theory. I, I've used theory in clinical sessions. I mean, that's nothing wrong with the theories, but theories are nice intellectual pursuits, mm -hmm. which I love. But yeah, how much can we then interpret the intellectual theory versus, you know, if we can just come out and say, well, if you do it this way, it helped me, it might help you. Exactly. you know, and if it doesn't, find something different and then maybe let me know because then I can learn something different, mm -hmm. you know, but more of those very practical, uh, you know, steps to show that everyone can do this on a daily basis. Correct, yeah. So, um, you know, we're looking at this topic and, you know, of, of how do we transition mm -hmm. um, and, it really popped into my mind to look at this uh, topic because, you know, I was dealing with some of my clients who, you know, are, are kind of grappling with this, either a, a life change as far as job or actual retirement. Uh, you know, I have a uh, birthday coming up and, you know, the more I think of that, you know, it's like, Ooh, that's one birthday close to retirement. Um, but then, you know, also knowing, but when you get there, you know, how much of our identity is wrapped into what we do. And it's always been a complaint I have of our society. Um, I can't speak to other societies, but the U.S. society, you know, we're, we're wrapped into, you know, what I do is who I am. And if I give that up in retirement, which is a great thing, a lot of people go into, you know, different phases of depression and, you know, really bothers them. So, you know, I thought we can maybe focus this mindfulness and, uh, you know, talk about some of your expertise and, you know, making these life transitions and, you know, how, how do we perceive it so that we can find peace in that time of our life uh, versus, you know, well, now who am I since I'm not working? And that's what we value in the society. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a long answer to this one. We can <laughs> unpack it, but... Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say something pretty outrageous in terms of, you know, the whole retirement. I don't really believe in retirement. Mm. I think our culture has um, packaged the concept in a way that is just so fraught with stress and anxiety that it builds up this artificial expectation, either for the good mm. in people, that people look forward to ending you know, I'm going to quit work or they're looking forward to beginning all these things that they've never done, but it's now mm -hmm. their chance. And then if that expectation doesn't get met, there's an opportunity for great disappointment. So either way, it's as far from mindfulness as you can get. Um, you know, retirement by definition is reviewing the past because you're ending a chapter of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it just is not living in the present. 
what I really like to think of is life is lived in different segments or chapters. Okay. And when we leave one chapter, another opens. Right. And so if we leave a place of employment or we end a type of outward work that we do, it's just one segment of our life. That doesn't mean who we are is over in any sense of the way. We morph and evolve and change throughout our entire lifetime until mm -hmm. we're no longer on this earth. And if we're able to accept that concept instead of thinking of ending, I think we can then broaden our view of how we want to continue and contribute. And so I look at the whole, um, I, I've been thinking for years of a new word for retirement, and I haven't mm -hmm. come up with one that I like. But I like to think of it more in terms of chapters of, you know, why we're here. What's our life purpose? Mm -hmm. And so many people think of their purpose as what they do. Right. And I don't think of that either. I think of it as who we are, you know, what our being is. So if you give in a certain way, mm -hmm. or if you, um, well, give is just, just a good way to express it, I think, in a general sense. Right. For, for example, if you teach, it doesn't matter if you do it in different ways from the time you're young to the time you're, you're gone. You're still teaching. You know, you can teach in a school. Mm -hmm. You can teach your children. You can teach your grandchildren. You can teach anybody you come in contact with but you as a person are still contributing you the knowledge that you have as a human being to another person so right. you're still adding value wherever you go and that's how i believe we can change our viewpoint about ending chapters to broaden the possibilities mm -hmm. and then when we do that it opens up all these windows to thinking of, oh, okay, well, I really enjoy doing this. So this chapter is at an end and not being all, you know, rosy tinted glass about it because there's always some loss and endings, but realistic, you know, mm -hmm. okay, this is over. So now this is beginning. This is an opportunity. And living in the present moment in that transition allows us to be able to do that clearly. Right. That's my long answer. <laughs> and and <laughs> I, I really, yeah, I, I, I love the long answer. And uh, because it, it makes sense to me from the whole mindfulness viewpoint. You know, like, like you say, it's not something that I'm I do either focused on the future about when is that retirement coming up? or, you know, reviewing the past and being stuck there, uh, you know, as to who I am, which is moving from chapter to chapter or phase to phase mm -hmm. of, of my life makes perfect sense to me. Um, the question, though, that would pop into my head that, that I think somebody would give back to me and, you know, and, and saying this to a client or something, mm -hmm. but it is who I am. You know, it's, uh, you know, like, like you say, I'm a teacher is a teacher. You know, and I think most people get into teaching is because they just love to teach other people wherever they are. Um, but it's different when you go to, say, a holiday party, you know, and somebody says, so what do you do? You know, well, I'm a high school teacher, grammar school teacher, professor, whatever. And, and then versus, well, I'm retired. I'm doing it. Um, even though I totally agree, they're still teaching. They're still doing things but how do we kind of get out of this societal framework that you know i am what i do see i think the challenge there is really in the response um and i agree with you it is you know i get a lot of pushback too um you can imagine yeah. although um, i agree yeah. <laughs> it's not a disagreement <laughs> i understand um but i think when we're asked those questions the answer isn't I'm retired, it's I'm um, having fun working and not working even, but I'm having fun showing my neighbors how to such and such. Right. 
You know, it's that I remember when somebody really close to me retired and everybody was saying, oh, aren't you? And they were making a lot of assumptions about mm -hmm. that. And I watched it. I, I, I found it fascinating, all the assumptions that were, you know, coming at me. And I just didn't agree with them. And it, it was really helpful to me to hear all of them. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, you know, it's, but I didn't you know, say it that way. But I said, well, actually, I'm thinking of it, you know, this way. And I could tell it wasn't the popular thought. Right. But I think that's how we, we begin. You know, we we show that, well, no, you know, this is this is a, a different idea. This is a different way, because really, all we have is what we believe in mm -hmm. how we can make our world. And that's a lot of power in itself. Right. So really uh, the way that I'm hearing it, if for those who are not yet retired, who are working, uh, you know, looking toward that retirement, or uh, I'd love to know what other word you can come up with when you do. Um, too. I'm working on it. <laughs> keep working. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, as they're looking at that, so maybe now when, when we look at, you know, something practical for them to do, I mean, uh, are you saying that if they start to change their framework and their perspective now, might make that transition emotionally easier? Absolutely. You know, I was thinking the other day of someone who, for example, works just on an assembly line, because this isn't just for, you know, like office workers. Right. This applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. So let's let's say there's somebody who works on an assembly line. And to them, it really is about working, showing up every day and working. But I think we've all seen people who do that type of work, or we know of people that are in those sorts of jobs that are the kindest, most considerate, considerate people that always have room in their day for a smile or mm -hmm. a gesture. And they always brighten somebody else's day, you know? So to me, without, you know, knowing exactly how I would um, title that person's purpose, I would say just for our purposes, mm -hmm. let's, let's give them their purpose is to brighten everyone's life. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's their way of being right. to spread joy. So if they began thinking of that as their role in life, then they could begin thinking, oh, well, okay. So I'm not going to be going into the um, assembly line every mm -hmm. um, day. I'm, I've already, I'm, and I'm assuming the practical things are taken care of in retirement. I mean, for our, for our discussion today, that's, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. But let's assume that this individual has all that, um, not as their concern right now. Right. And they're thinking about how they're going to take care of their daily activities. So they're thinking, okay, how am I going to spread joy? Well, you know, maybe their neighbor's sidewalk needs clearing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they know that the young mom down the street is really frazzled in the morning and doing a little errand for her would help. Right. Or, you know, little things like that it becomes a fun game for them. So then when they're out at the corner store or something and somebody says, hey, you're retired now. I hear you're retired. What are you up to? They say, well, you know, I'm having fun thinking of ways to surprise people. Hmm. Yeah. And it just raises that curiosity. Something like that. Mm -hmm. A way of changing the whole dialogue. Well, and, and I like that because that, that is changing the perception for the person in that stage of life. But what I do like is how that will then change the dialogue because that's not what the other person expected to hear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th that'll give them a moment of pause and, and maybe want to know, well, what do you mean? And the more that the other can describe what they're doing, maybe that will inspire that person to say, you know, hey, I, I've got somebody who, you know, might need some help too. And, you know, it doesn't seem to be a burden on you. Maybe I can go help that person. You yeah. know, so it, it's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like you say, um, you know, we inspire other people without even knowing we do it as humans. Mm -hmm. You know, I think as humans, we all share the same experiences. So we just by being ourselves are impacting everyone around us. Right.
without even knowing it. <laughs> and then, exactly. you know, that's uh, the, the wonderful mystery of it. And uh, I think at times a little frightening because, you know, if we can impact them that way, are we impacting them in the opposite too? You know, so we kind of really have to be aware of what we do. It can be a big responsibility if we keep thinking about it. So, you know, my only, and I've had people ask me about that too. And my way of dealing with that personally is I just try my best mm -hmm. and then I try to let it go. Right. And I think that again, takes us back to mindfulness. You know, we, we, it's not ever perfection. It's always a process, isn't mm -hmm. it? Life isn't perfect. <laughs> That's, no. No. you know, but, but in, in a good way, you know, I mean, you know, not that I want major negative things to happen, but you know, if, if you think about if life were perfect, it might be boring. Or here's an alternative view of uh, maybe it's perfect in the sense that what it gives us in the challenges is what we need to see. Right. Right. Very true. When you're dealing with people in, in these situations and making this, this transition, what are some of the things that you hear most often from, uh, you know, people transitioning from work to different work, maybe we'll say? <laughs> um, loneliness is a big one um, because I don't know that, I don't believe uh, people adequately prepare for the isolation that's just mm. an automatic unless we plan otherwise. Um, work has a beautifully built in system of support. Mm -hmm. Whether we like our employment or not, it has a certain structure that does a lot for us in terms of social support. Right. Um, you know, it keeps us intellectually developed, it keeps us functioning at a social level where we know how to communicate with other people well. Um, it really keeps us functioning at a certain level that's healthy. Mm -hmm. When we leave that structure, we have to find a way to recreate that or it doesn't just happen. Right. And I see that is an area that needs to really be thought out or else people start to, and they don't notice it right away. It takes a while. Um, and it's sometimes very, I find that area kind of sad because it will mm -hmm. come to the learning part of that comes later. And it's sometimes a painful one where somebody is in a situation that's uncomfortable and then says, Oh, yeah. you know, I'm feeling really badly now. Yeah. So that's a big one. And, and I would imagine it's similar to changing a job. You know, I know when I've changed into, into different jobs, you know, everybody always says we're going to stay in touch, you know, where we're going to, you know, keep doing things. And, and that lasts for a little bit. You know, you still email, you call, you, you might get together. But I, I know from previous jobs, it's now rare that, that I communicate with somebody for, from that job. And, and I would imagine the, the same in, in that retirement, you know, you you spend a few months or, or however long actually still interacting with them uh, and you seem happier about it because you're not under the pressure of the day-to-day -day work. Um, but then it probably, I would think, fades for most unless you have you know, a really close friend. But You're right. You're exactly right. And the thing that brings us together in work situations is gone. You know, mm -hmm. the shared experiences yep. isn't there in the same way. So unless you've formed a true friendship where you're bonded in another way, um, it's by definition artificial right. unless you've replaced that in another way. Yeah. So it gets uncomfortable to continue it past a certain point. Um, it depends on the conversations too. If somebody right. who's left there is always talking about their ski trips and their you know leisure time mm -hmm. and people at work are still disappointed with the politics inside the company, it's not going to be a conversation that feels good on both sides. Yeah, no, no very true. And that, that's probably going to be one of the things that starts to end uh, those yeah. relationships. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I didn't really think of, of that piece that you brought up uh, of, you know, the bond, you know, it, it's more so that work bond as to, you know, shared 
uh, you know, what we do in the politics and, you know, we all can complain because we're all under the same thing. Um, yeah, until we leave that or get promoted or, we're, you know, whatever happens, mm -hmm. uh, changes those dynamics. How do you help somebody with, with the loneliness, you know, to, to get them past it? Because I would assume most people don't plan for that. You know, when they do hit that, what, what would be some uh, good ways for them to move beyond that? It, um, they have to be willing to act, but to find things that they really do like to do um, and then join some, not join necessarily groups, but join into an area that has some other people in it. So if somebody's physically fit, instead of always working out at home, if they're going to run, run at least in public where they can talk to somebody on a running path. Or mm -hmm. if they have a gym at home, maybe join a gym or go mm -hmm. to an exercise class. Um, if they do some sort of craft, consider taking a, a class. You know, some way to get out in public. If there are people that are in their life that they just don't feel comfortable reaching out to, I encourage them to reach out. Sometimes it's a, it's a confidence issue. You know, our, mm. our jobs do give us an artificial confidence of, oh, I work for so-and-so, so I can contact them because of such and such. And it right. takes a lot more to just go out as yourself and say, hey, do you want to go out for lunch? Mm -hmm. um, so doing that and just saying, do you want to go get a cup of coffee or go out for lunch um, it is a, a big challenge that I encourage. There's another piece to that, too. Some people, when they retire, aren't on the same economic um, uh, base as their old lunch partners. True. You know, um, if the lunches were always expense account lunches or lunches at really nice restaurants, and now you know you still have money to go out for lunch, but it's not at the same level. Uh, right. So it's not as comfortable. So, But you can still go out for coffee. Mm -hmm. still buy a really nice coffee, you know, things yeah. like that. So there's ways to do it, but sometimes talking through and making, it often just takes making a plan and following through those really practical steps. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that makes a lot of sense in, in that planning, you know, and that's something that I try to explain to people, the difference within at least my understanding of the mindfulness that, you know, we don't want to dwell into the future, uh, you know, because we have to stay in the present moment. But in the present moment, we do have the opportunity to make some plans, uh, you know, just keeping open that, <clears throat> excuse me, that variable that, you know, maybe uh, the plan might need to be modified in the future. But um, still, we can mindfully prepare uh, for whatever is, you know, what we feel underneath under our control. Do you like the concept of holding on lightly when you plan? Mm -hmm. That's something I'm personally working on. <laughs> I like to hold tight. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, but the concept, you know, um, it is something that, yeah, definitely, you know, I, I talk about with people and, and the concept of, of uh, you know, let people know that flexibility is, I think, much more in tune with mindfulness and finding peace than uh, holding on tightly. <laughs> <laughs> when you talked about, when you said, you know, you encourage people that you can plan by living mindfully, by planning in the present moment. Absolutely. And then it's like you said, you know, things evolve. So um, I think being aware of what the present moment invites, and I don't mean being flaky, or spontaneous people would right. say I'm one of the most rigid people and I'm not I'm really quite spontaneous but it's because I do really tune in mm -hmm. um, and pay attention and that's what I honor right um, yeah it's very different yeah well and, and especially in, in that you know holding lightly in, in you know that sense that not everything is in our control and, you know, I think when we begin to plan for something in the future, we have to really figure out what is in my control and what isn't so that we don't spend a lot of time and energy on, on the things we, we just can't control anyways. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like snowstorms. So, exactly. You know, and, and, you know, well, what do you do with this? And what if this happens? And what if that happens? And, you know, I, I'm really for myself working on it and always encouraging my clients when, you know, we're looking at the future and then they say, well, that's a, a great plan, but then what if this and what if that? And I, I always have to remind them, well, yeah, what if the asteroid hits tomorrow? I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it could. Yeah. They could, you know, but, but that's out of our control. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so we don't know the what ifs, but, you know, at least say this is how I would like things to be, which is in my control and start making some in the moment plans and in the moment decisions that will get you to where you would like to be. But keeping in mind that, yes, snowstorms will get in the way and other things will get in the way. And, you know, the, the great plan you had may no longer be that great plan. Mm -hmm. Maybe a better plan. <laughs> it might be. And I do, I do think, you know, in terms of anxiety, sometimes planning for those um, possibilities can give a lot of peace also. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So... You know, I, I know coming up and, uh, you know, we don't get too much snow where I am, but when we do, everybody panics, which I'm not used to. I grew up up north where there's a lot of snow all the time and I love it. But here you get an inch and everybody panics, everything shuts down. And um, so now that winter is, you know, approaching and the colder air coming in, that is things that we do need some contingency plans, you know, because the, the slightest uh, threat of a snowflake is, is going to foil most plans around here. And uh, that can happen somewhat often. So, yeah, that, that thinking of well, what, what are we going to do in this situation versus this situation, knowing I can't control the snow nor what people, uh, how they react to the snow. Mm -hmm. Tough stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snow and technology. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I say with the technology. Why shut everything down? I mean, you know, look, we, we've got video stuff we can do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, why close the schools? We'll do video uh, teaching. <laughs> yeah. And the, so many schools can, side point, but they do. They do so much. Mm -hmm. um, but somehow they don't hear. I don't know that they rely on it during snow days, but I'm not an educator, so I can't really speak to that intelligently. Right. Yeah. No, I, a lot of schools here have all that capability, but none that I'm aware of around here that will do that. It's, it's still the snow day is the snow day and, you know, go out and have fun, um, you know, which is fine. Right? It's, that's what yeah. kids are for, you know, so live the moment, enjoy the snow because it's going to melt around here the next moment anyway. So <laughs> you know, you'll be back in school anyway. So enjoy it. <laughs> um, you know, but that, that's kind of that, that fleetingness of, of, you know, how things can be, which kind of brings up another question. When we look at, you know, the retirement, do you have any thoughts or opinions or, you know, working with people about when, to retire about people who, you know, look at an early retirement, you know, say when they're 50 or 55 versus waiting into the traditional 60s. Uh, any thoughts or concerns either way? I have concerns if somebody doesn't have something in mind for what they want to do with their time. Um, because I think that if it's, if retirement is thought of as a relief, and a jumping off point, it's unrealistic and it's a setting up for disappointment and potential depression. Right. Um, and that is a concern that I would, you know, that I have when people talk about it in that way. Um, sometimes retirement's looked at as a solution to unhappiness. And when people use that sort of language, that concerns me. Um, in general, though, I don't think there's a specific age as long as the practical things of finances and something right. to do are well planned out. Um, I really think we all as humans have to have a way that we 
contribute ourselves. And I don't mean work. I don't mean we have to all be doing these great things in society and, you know, volunteering and giving great service everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I do believe we each need to be giving our own gifts to the world in some way, whether that's to our family, to our immediate community, or to a larger community is irrelevant. If we're giving to other humans, we're giving of ourselves. Unless we have a way to do that, I don't believe we stay human, uh, humanly happy mm -hmm. and involved and engaged. And I think we become very um, mentally uh, unbalanced. Right. And then that leads to physical problems and all other problems. Um, so that's what concerns me more than age. Mm -hmm. um, and then the financial part is, you know, a practical part. I think money is a reflection, actually, of a lot of the other aspects. Um, and that can be planned for to the best of our ability. Right. There's, I mean, there's always lots of variables. <laughs> yeah, no, that with that's... everything. <laughs> well, exactly. I think that's what stresses most people, you know, is they can look at their financial report and it says, well, you know, here's what you have to live on for years, you know, and per month, you can say, I could do that. And then something happens, <laughs> you, know, and, yeah. you know, now what do I do? You know, so that, that must cause a, a lot of anxiety for people. But I think people look at that as a, um a focus point that can be a stopping point. I think we, when we aren't looking at a bigger answer that we can come to for ourselves, we focus mm -hmm. on a point um, that is fixed, like money, or we'll choose something in our life we can hold on to as quote unquote, the problem. Mm -hmm. And when in fact, there's usually a way to get through it if we're really dedicated and committed to getting through it. So for example, if somebody had a vision of what they really wanted to do in their life, but they were in a job that was um, keeping them from being able to spend the time mm -hmm. to do it, and they looked at the finances and they said, oh, that's okay, I couldn't do it anyway. Mm -hmm. I believe that if they spent the time really going through it, all the details, there would be a way to make it happen. Right. So again, it's a, a refocus of our current reality. You know, kind of look at life mm -hmm. a little bit different, which kind of comes in into my other question. That's kind of the opposite of this. You know, that if somebody really feels in in their life that it's they have all the things saying to them, "This is my time now to." retire to start doing something different, you know, slow my life, whatever, you know, those, that, that term is, but they're frustrated because they look at things like the money, you know, and say, well, I can't mm -hmm. afford it now. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm ready for it. And I've got some of the other stuff in place. I, I could do some of this other stuff, but that's just not there, you know? So that frustration uh, you know, can tend to eat at somebody and, and affect, you know, what they're doing at work, uh, you know, think of themselves, well, I could be doing something different. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a very real um, issue for people based on some of the things that have happened in our economy and some of the choices people have made in their lives. I think in that practical situation, talking to a really trusted financial planner mm -hmm. can help. And there are often ways they can show you um, to make changes. I mean, there's some really creative things that aren't speculative um, that can make changes. Um, you know, and I'm not a qualified financial person, but it is impressive the way mm -hmm. they can help you through those obstacles. Right. So just assuming that you can't by looking at your own portfolio is not the answer. If, if people get to that point, absolutely um, take it further and say, mm -hmm. okay, I know I'm mentally ready. I'm physically ready. I'm so motivated to do this next thing. And now I'm, I don't see a way out of this. Then it's time to take it to the next step of a financial professional and say, right. help. 
You know, yeah. what can I do? You know, get, get me to this point, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's really good because, you know, unless you're actually in that field of financial planning, I, I, I wouldn't think you would know most of those options. And I know I don't, you know, and, you know, so I could never advise somebody on that except for the good advice that you're saying of, you know, we'll go find somebody you know, and see what they can do and, um, you know, get, get you on that path. So, yeah. And I've heard some really impressive things. Um, sometimes people don't like the answers. I mean, maybe it requires selling some things they don't like to sell mm-hmm. um, or making some changes, but that's, that's a choice too. You right. know, what's more important, holding on or letting go and starting something new. Um, yep. And again, living in the uh, present moment of mindfulness, is that exercise of evaluating, you know, and that's where that helps in that transition Mm -hmm. of not holding on and not looking forward, but being able to really stand in the present moment to see what fits for now. Does that old way fit or does that new way fit? Well, only by standing in the present moment will you really know what the right choice is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how that transition works. And I would tend to think if you are trying to transition into a new chapter of life, you you might find it easier if you do remove some of those old things. You know, kind of not that you're going to throw everything up in the air, but, you know, why let some of that old bog you down when you're starting a new chapter? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, people do different things. One person I know, uh, packed everything away for a year Hmm. and traveled. You didn't get rid of things, but she just packed it away. Um, and then after a year she was able to evaluate what she wanted to keep. And I thought that was just a really Mm -hmm. savvy way to do it. It gave her a lot of clarity. Yeah. I I bet a lot of it did not get unpacked and kept. It did not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she yeah. made some really significant changes too. Um, because she was able to have the clarity after mm-hmm. coming back, you know, to having removed herself from the attachment of everything that had been part of her past. Right. Yeah. And if you have no need of something for a whole year and you still find life fulfilling, mm-hmm. then yeah, why unpack it and keep it now? Uh, obviously, it wasn't necessary for your own fulfillment. So. <laughs> Yeah. you know, away it goes. But yeah, I really like that. That that would be great for those who can do something like that. Um, and, and I know, you know, people who tend to downsize that that's one of the things that, uh, you know, they start looking at if they're, you know, either entering, you know, um, uh, retirement type, you know, housing, or they're, you know, just want a smaller house with all the kids gone really have to look at, you know, I can't fit everything from this massive house into this very small place. Uh, You know, what do I bring? What don't I bring? Mm -hmm. And then there's other people who don't want to travel Mm -hmm. and they don't want to downsize, but they're very content staying with exactly what they have and making their life there. Right. Um, And not settling into the past, but making a new full life where they are. Mm -hmm. Um, So everyone has an opportunity to create it in their own way, but I do think it takes a conscious decision of how it's going to be created, not just falling into this is the routine because there isn't a routine until you make it. Mm -hmm. And and make that new routine. You know, I mean, in the lifestyle of going to a job and, you know, having those, pressures and requirements and moving into this new chapter where, you know, like you say, you may be doing things, but you don't have those pressures. You're creating a whole new routine. And, you know, it really might be a time to look at what was missing when you were working. You know, so can you spend maybe more time with, you know, a spouse or a partner or friends or, you know, that you couldn't do before. And that becomes part of your, uh, you know, regular routine. Exactly. Someone who I know um, very well said to me very much what you just said. 
he said that when he left his job, he felt like he could become the person he'd always wanted to be hmm. because he had the time to do the things that he'd always thought about okay. and that he'd always wanted to do. He could reach out to the people that he thought about reaching out to mm -hmm. and he could do those sorts of things that he wanted to in the past, but right. you know, for whatever reason, didn't. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So it can really become a, a freeing time on, on many levels, not not just the hey, I don't have to go to work, but you know that that whole emotional freedom of, of now, yeah, living who I am, or starting to find out who am I outside of work. Well, I think that's a whole nother um, area of discussion. Absolutely, you know, I think that the next chapter in our life when we retire is a very um, spiritual chapter for us. Mm -hmm. Because it's at the, if we break our life into thirds, it's at that closing chapter of how we're going to contribute in that deeper way, in that soul connected way. Um, it, and it doesn't assume we haven't done that earlier, but it deepens. Mm -hmm. And so we have another invitation to do it then. Um, and no matter how, how long we live, it literally, if we break our life into thirds, it's our last opportunity. Right. Um, so, yes, we have one more chance to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, helping people along to understand that we do change who we are throughout our life. You know, where, you know, people say, well, you know, why is it now at the end of my life that I get to find out who I really am? Um, you know, I, I try to change that perspective and say, but you know, who you were 20 years ago and whatever was who you were then, you know, and, and we're just changing into different areas. You know, that, that doesn't mean, you know, now you found yourself at the end. It, it's just, well, this is who you are in, in that last third, you know, that, yeah. um, so there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. No. And it also contributed, right? Mm -hmm. That person grew into that. Um, older person. So without that other version, it wouldn't have turned into that older version. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. hopefully with some wisdom and, you know, the ability to, you know, enjoy life for what it is and with it, without some of those other burdens that, you know, might've been necessary at different stages in life, you know, um, yeah. especially if you're struggling with, uh, you know, money and, and, kids and things like that this becomes a time of your life when those struggles may not exist but you know how do you now take those strengths to deal with whatever struggles you might have now yeah and i think you know i i do think the last chapter gives us other challenges um in terms of illness in terms of those bigger life challenges we see death a lot more mm -hmm. Um, but it, it offers, um, I think depth is the word I keep coming back to. It offers a perspective mm -hmm. of how to view all that, that allows us to deepen our view of life in general. Mm. And I think that is perhaps, um, the intention I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it sounds very plausible, you know, and, and I, I've always been that believer. And even before dealing with, you know, mindfulness, you know, we are who we are at this moment because of, you know, the past choices and, and the past experiences, you know, so, you know, having then that moment now in this last third to take what we've learned and incorporate that into uh, you know, of what's going on and, you know, and, and there does seem to be a lot of loss at this period, but I, I guess mm -hmm. if you refocus, there's still a lot of opportunity that mm -hmm. didn't exist before. Exactly. And I think of, you know, the uh, reason I was thinking of that is I think of the difference between joy and happiness mm -hmm. and it's not always easy to find happiness in the middle of, you know, uh, tragedy. Right. 
but I do believe you can always find joy. You can always find joy in the values. You know, you can mm-hmm. see somebody extending kindness. You can see, um, oh, there's so much heartwarming action in the middle of any any human experience. Yeah. And so that is what I call joy. It opens our heart. Mm-hmm. And I do believe there's a lot of that heart opening at yeah. the last part of our life. Especially if the person can look at life from that different perspective, you know, not dwelling on the loss, but these opportunities. And, and you don't want to miss those opportunities by dwelling on the negative aspect that's going on around you. Exactly. Yep. Makes perfect sense. What have we missed? Is there anything we haven't covered on, on retirement and helping people to make that transition? Or if we, what are you thinking? No, but what I did was um, I made, I know that you also like to do practical things for your listeners. Mm-hmm. So I put together um, a set of worksheets for your listeners. Um, and it's in order to take uh, mindfulness and get your brain organized in your creative thoughts and just put it down on paper and sort it all out. So if your listeners want to go to my website and I put it at janelbowen.com slash peace podcast. Mm-hmm. And on that page, um, you'll be able to just download some worksheets. Yeah. And, and I really appreciate uh, you doing that. And for those you know, listening here, I threw it on the comment section, uh, the link to that, uh, which will oh, be here. Yeah, and, and that'll be here. It's always on Huzzah for however long they're going to be a company. Um, so you can click there and uh, I will put that onto the um, uh, show notes as this gets you know uh, put on all the podcast sites. But yeah, I really encourage the listeners to check that out. Uh, it's a wonderful practical uh, worksheet that you know works your way through helping you to, to transition and and uh, you know just really put some practical things down and and that's one of the things I really liked about it you know it's it's making some of those lists and some of those plans that we were talking about. Good. Good. Yep. So excellent resource. Encourage people to use it, and I appreciate you doing the resource for. Uh, you know, for all of the listeners out there. So, so my wonderful pleasure. tool to have. My pleasure. I, you know, the other thing um, we didn't talk about is the actual mindfulness practice. Hmm. Please share. <laughs> well, I was thinking that one of the ways that it gets overlooked in mm-hmm. uh, what I hear in my experience is that it's um, too difficult to do. It's too complicated. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to really emphasize is that we can practice mindfulness just in our daily life, just by intentionally focusing on the moment we're living. And that in itself is a mindfulness practice. Yep. What what have you heard from people of why it's so difficult? What do they tell you? Like, what what makes it so difficult? I know what I've Chris, heard. There's no time. There's yeah. no time. Yeah. There's just no time. Yeah. And that's yeah. So, and I smile about it because um, I do. I love to simplify it, you know. And I'm mm-hmm. I choose to do quite a lot of um, practice because that's what I like to do. I do not expect anybody to do what I do. So I love to say how simple it can be. Mm -hmm. You know, while you're driving, you can breathe in one breath at a time. And if you do that with focus and intention, it's mindfulness because you're focused on that one present action. Mm -hmm. Um, And just to begin thinking of that way of doing things can be transformative. Yeah. And, and everything that we're doing can become mindful. You know, mm-hmm. do you mindfully eat, mindfully clean up, 
you know, cutting the lawn, like you say, driving the car, you know, walking, whatever it is that you're doing, you know, as long as it's done with intent and, you know, focused on the breathing and what's happening around us and just being aware, uh, mm-hmm. you know, slowing ourselves enough because, yeah, the two big things that I've heard is there is no time. Um, so we are just too busy and we're rushing around. And then the other one that I heard is, well, when I try to be mindful, everything floods my mind and it just totally overtakes and confuses me. Right. And that one, um, the, my response to that is that is part of the process. That Mm -hmm. is part of meditation. And that means that you are practicing it. Um, and yeah. And the practice is that you just continue it's in and out and you just allow it. And mm-hmm. that's the practice of it. Right. Because when we're saying, you know, without judgment, then if things are flowing into our mind, you just need to feel that, acknowledge it without that judgment of trying to push it away or, you know, that putting expectations on us. Well, that's not supposed to be there, you know, who says it's not supposed to be there? Maybe that's a message you're to get if you want to talk about supposed to's, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Maybe there's something in that moment. And that's a whole nother discussion. You know, what is in each moment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how do we define it? And, you know, the present. And, you know, I, I get some of that stuff, too. And, you know, and to me, and it's true, is sense you know the it's hard to grasp a moment because the moment because the past the minute we want to name it the moment um Mm -hmm. but uh yeah i think when we just try to focus ourselves to experience all that is happening Mm -hmm. then we're being mindful you know and, and then we're allowing ourselves to get from it whatever it is that we need to get from all the moments that keep happening in our lives. Yeah. And I do believe each moment is presented to us as an opportunity. Um, And within each moment, there is a lot of information for us. Mm -hmm. Um, So. Yep. And that could be a whole other talk down the road. (laughs) (laughs) How exactly to define the moment and live in that moment and experience that moment. And Yeah. You know, because the I think those are what we were saying at the beginning. Some of the things that you know make this so easy as a concept, yet so very difficult to do in practice. Exactly. You know, exactly to be able to sum this up in like one or two sentences to me just it's like, well, that's too easy. Um, Okay, go do those two sentences. (laughs) Start Mm -hmm. to see the complexity. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do, I think when, um, you know, for, tra- for um, transitioning to retirement, I really like the concept in terms of time, because retirement is about past and future. Mm-hmm. And I love the way that you brought mindfulness to that chapter in our life, because the present moment is really how I like to think of that chapter. Mm-hmm. It's an opportunity. Right. It's a huge opportunity. That, that I, I fear many people miss because of all the other stuff we were talking about that gets in the way of, you know, looking at, at that wonderful opportunity. Um, but we do need to come up with a different term. So keep working on that different word for retirement. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm, um, I'll work on that one. Yeah, because it, it, it does, you know, when after you had said that as my mind is processing, you know, it, it kind of does say to me, you know, an end, you know, and, and that to me is just too negative of a concept to, to say at this point in your life, it's an end, you know, when it, it's such an opportunity as we were talking for, you know, the, the beginnings and, and even continuations. Uh, so yeah, just to look at it as the end, I think it's just too negative. I look forward to yeah. hearing it. <laughs> Chime in with any ideas you have. Oh, don't look me. I'm not a wordsmith. So. Okay. <laughs> this one's on you. <laughs> Maybe your listeners will have some ideas too. That would be so great. So, anybody who's listening, chime in. Yep. 
f- find us on our social medias and just pop yeah. in and say, here's our new word for retirement. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I'll send you gifts. There you go. Yeah. Excellent. I love to send presents. So I'll send a present to the person who comes up with a good word. Oh, cool. We'll, we'll have to put that out there. <laughs> okay. Get that All out right. there and say the one who can come up with it. Um, Maybe that'll be my January thing. I like to do little little contests. Nice. I'll put that in the hopper. There you go. There you go. You know, one of those things you can prepare for, but who knows what'll happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Great. For people who do want to get in touch with you and learn more about what you do and who you are, what would be the best way for them to do that? Um, my website is easy to find. It's my name, Jan L. Bowen. Uh, B-O-W- J-A-N-L-B-O-W-E-N.com. Mm-hmm. And I'm on uh, most of the social media channels. Uh, Facebook, I have a page on Facebook. I'm on Instagram where I put behind the scenes pictures. And then I'm on Twitter. Um, I'd love to hear from anybody. I love to interact. Mm-hmm. And I respond. So please get a hold of me, chat. I'd love it. Excellent. Well, I, I really appreciate this time. And it's, uh, you know, definitely given me some things to think about and different perspectives to look on. And, you know, uh, I'm sure it's inspired others as well. So uh, I really appreciate your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure for me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.